Uh, poetry now with our topical verse correspondent, Tim Key. Uh, this poem is about um, bankers, the dreadful um, bastards, the dreadful bastards who work in banks, screwed the country over. Anyway, I'll let the poem, let the poem do the talking. This horrible fucking banker figure sat his fat ass down on a chair in Amanda's office. And in brackets, I've got Amanda's part of HR, human resources. The banker had caviar and swan round his chops. And his hair was stuck down to his forehead with sweat. Just a despicable... He was panting, exhausted from the short walk from the glass elevator to the office. Imagine this big fat. And by 14 years of greed, Amanda leaned forward and he peered lustily down her top. Same as like when he leered at the dancers in the strip joints in which he blew his money throughout the 90s. He licked his lips clonking fish eggs and feathers onto the floor. We're going to have to let you go. Amanda smiled. Is it because the bottom's fallen out? Yes. Is it linked in with me and my mates being irredeemably greedy twerps in the good times? Yes. That and also complaints about your hygiene. Our lumpen banker staggered away in waves of tears. And he staggered to his lawyer. And his lawyer sorted everything out, and he got an excellent redundancy package in the end. Horrible man. You know, when I suggested doing this screen wipe current affairs spin-off type show, I thought it would be a good exercise in self-improvement. But in fact, all it's done is depress me because the news is so horrible. Uh, we believe from what the police officer was telling us that he killed his 74-year-old grandmother, also his mother, his uncle, his cousin, his 15-year-old second cousin. In addition, he killed a baby, he killed a sheriff deputy's wife, he killed two pedestrians, he killed a petrol station assistant, he killed a motorist, he let loose seven rounds at a trooper, he shot the chief of police and he shot himself. I will let you digest that for a moment. Which isn't to say the world itself is horrible. I mean, it's still full of sunshine and flowers and cuddly creatures you'd like to have sex with, like this rabbit. Oh, look at that rabbit. Anyway, I guess what I'm saying is there's generally more good than bad in the world, unless you're watching the news, which likes to accentuate the negative at every turn. For instance, a few weeks ago at a homecoming parade for our boys, a small group of 15 to 20 Islamist protesters kicked up a stink by wobbling a load of antagonistic placards around and loudly decrying Western imperialism from behind a line of Western imperialists defending their right to shout about the system that was permitting them to shout. If you see what I mean. Predictably, the protest outrage song well wishes so much, things quickly turned ugly. Yes, before long, two people were arrested, one for climbing on top of a supermarket and throwing a packet of bacon at the protesters. So a tiny minority of another minority try to stir up some outrage and there's two arrests. Not a huge deal. Except the news thought differently, of course. To the news, it was a huge deal. It provided dramatic material for news bulletins, fantastic emotive copy for populist tabloid headlines, and a great starting point for countless hours of confused debate on shows like Banal Morning, Guff Storm, The Right Stuff. Steve, what's your feelings on this? Right, well, I, I totally um, think it's bad that they uh, tried to uh, protest and uh, well, bas basically... Um... And shorter bursts of simplistic yes-no debate on decisive Sky News. Hello? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I think probably... Hello? 
Meanwhile, radical cleric Anjum Chowdhury, who heads the group that arranged the protest, was all over cosy GMTV, enjoying the publicity and their comfy sofa. And the reality is, you see, that if we had this demonstration at another time, when the parade was not taking place, it probably wouldn't have got the coverage that it's got, and I wouldn't be here now talking about it Anjum, on your programme. you've okay. certainly got us all going this morning. There's been a lot of dialogue, and dialogue has to be considered a good thing, I guess. Thank you it's very much. It's good that you can I come and talk to us about it. Yes, thanks, Anjum. Now, would you like an infidel biscuit? Mmm, they're lovely. There was also another parade scheduled to take place that day, which the news excitedly cut to. But wouldn't you know it, when the moment of truth came, the Watford march passed off without incident and the news was left without a story. Parades, let's have a listen to see what's, uh, what's going on down there in Watford. No, no, don't be shaming baby killers, this is boring, fuck it. Still, while there wasn't even the tiniest protest in Watford, there was a huge protest taking place in Northern Ireland, where thousands of demonstrators were taking to the streets in the name of peace. Yes, that's thousands of protesters coming together to demonstrate against the recent upsurge in Republican violence. So surely if 15 to 20 protesters in Luton gets a lot of coverage, surely thousands of protesters in Northern Ireland is going to get even more, right? Wrong. Tonight at 10, a mass shooting at a school in Germany leaves 16 people dead. Yes, because on the same day as the peace demonstration, a lone maniac in Germany went berserk with a gun, killing 16 people. This senseless tragedy provided material for news reports for days to follow. First, there were the initial dramatic breakdowns detailing precisely how the carnage unfolded. There was grim, voyeuristic mobile phone footage of the gunman's last moments and a chilling reconstruction of a warning he apparently posted on the internet. He typed these words. Everybody's laughing at me. No one sees my potential. I'm serious. Which later turned out to be almost certainly false, incidentally. The aftermath in Vinodon proved so compelling for the vulture-like rolling news stations, they even filled airtime showing things that weren't happening yet. Two days later, even footage from an old ping-pong tournament in which the back of the gunman's head was vaguely visible was still considered news. The latest pictures of Kretschmer show him playing table tennis, his favourite sport. And three days later, even worse footage, pixelated to the point where it looked like a broadcast from the f***ing Lego dimension, well, that was considered news too. In the video, Kretschmer is shown taking part in an arm wrestling contest in Rottenburg last year. You know, I think if I squint, I can just about make out the face of a killer. Isn't the news brilliant? Repeatedly showing us a killer's face isn't news, it's just rubbernecking. What's more, this sort of coverage only serves to turn this murdering little twat into a sort of nihilistic pin-up boy. One thing the news kept plaintively asking was why this had happened. Why? What had triggered in the mind of a seemingly normal teenager such fury and alienation? Well, if you want to know why, why not ask a forensic psychiatrist? We've had 20 years of mass murders, throughout which I have repeatedly told CNN and our other media, if you don't want to propagate more mass murders. Don't start the story with sirens blaring. The school day had only just begun when the attacker struck. Don't have photographs of the killer. The 17-year-old's three-hour rampage ended in his own death. Don't make this 24-7 coverage. The German Chancellor is about to give her reaction. We'll bring that to you live. Do everything you can not to make uh, the body count the lead story. <laughs> Carnage in the classroom, 16 people are dead. Not to make the killer some kind of anti-hero. Dressed in black combat gear, the gunman opened fire at random. Do localize this story to the affected community and make it as boring as possible in every other market. Because every time we have intense saturation coverage of a mass murder, we expect to see one or two more within a week. But, but we have, but I mean, ho ho hold on a second here. In summary, then, not only does bad news always trump good news, but that bad news might itself actually help create more bad news, which is good news, if you're the news. <sighs> well, that's all we've got time for this evening. Go away. And Charlie's back with another News Wipe at the same time next week. Next tonight, Marcus Brigstock has a whole host of new experiences lined up for John Humphreys to try. I'm not sure which of them is the braver. I've Never Seen Star Wars is here in just a few moments.